Hey friends, welcome to Hot News and welcome back to our new set. Yes, we're in our new office. Welcome, look at, it's amazing, we love it. We got a fireplace because it's hot news. Homie, love it, love you, thank you for showing up. Uh, we're still gonna be working on a few things as we develop the time and get things changed up in here, but I like it, I like this set. So let us know what you think of the new set down below in the comments. And while you're down there in the comments, why don't you talk about Nvidia's next RTX 3080 GPU because there's been some leaks that have come out in the past couple of days indicating that they might be unveiled in March at Nvidia's GTC. And not only is there the idea that they're gonna be unveiled, but there's actual die diagrams of the GPUs themselves. Supposedly these are gonna be the GA103 and GA104 GPU chips. There's a lot of reasons why you should take this with a large grain of salt because the GPU diagrams aren't actually as detailed as they would be if they were official unveiling. It could be that this is just a pre-production thing and so we're getting a lot of uh, nebulous details and not necessarily something that's concrete. However, there's tons of reports out there saying that with the 60 and 48 streaming multiprocessors of the reported GA103 and 104 saying that this is going to be really fast chips. The RTX 3080 supposedly going to be faster than the 2080 Ti while also coming in at orders of magnitude cheaper, which would make it so that it's a much better value generation in that it could potentially bring ray tracing to the mainstream. Obviously, take this with a huge grain of salt. We haven't even seen Ampere put into the roadmap, so the fact that we're getting die diagrams is a little weird, and the fact that we think we know what's going on with the streaming multiprocessors is also a little weird, and then also there's information regarding its 320-bit memory interface bus, which would mean it needs 20 or 10 gigabytes of VRAM, which is also a little weird for NVIDIA. There's a few things about this that don't make a ton of sense, but it could all become clear at GTC in March, which is supposed to take place March 22nd through the 26th, and likely we're gonna get an unveiling of some sort of architecture by NVIDIA at that date, because that's when they unveiled Volta, and we were able to see what they were planning on doing for the cloud and server environment with those cards and so it's likely that Ampere would at least have that if not also some sort of consumer facing application. NVIDIA never really said anything about Volta being consumer facing at GTC so they might not even say that about Ampere and we might also get a brand new architecture just like we did. Volta was the just purely high-end performance and then we got turning a little later down the line for the actual consumers. My main point is wait rumors are out there RTX 3080 might exist but nothing more concrete than that. But there is something more concrete about a new mobile card that might be coming out from NVIDIA, the RTX 2080 Super Max-Q in a laptop. There's benchmarks out there showing that it is indeed faster than the RTX 2080 Max-Q. Cool. Not many people are gonna be buying that. But then there's also indication that NVIDIA is gonna be refreshing their MX series with an MX350 and MX330 series GPUs. These are still gonna be based on Pascal and the MX350 looks to be a replacement for the GTX 1050 and the MX330 looks to be a replacement for the MX250. So if you're into low end gaming GPUs on a laptop, this is gonna be your bag of tea. Bag of tea? Is that a thing? Cup of tea. It's gonna be your cup of tea. But in yesterday's hot news, we actually reported on NVIDIA's dropping the price of the RTX 2060 to $299 to compete better with the RX 5600 XT from AMD. And it turns out that AMD has a little bit left in its tank to upgrade the 5600 XT before it even launched so that it's more competitive. So they're increasing the base clock speed from 1,375 megahertz all the way up to 1650. And they're increasing the boost from 1560 all the way up to 1750. And then on top of that, they're increasing the performance of the VRAM from 12 gigabits per second to 14 gigabits per second. What this actually means, based on leaked benchmarks that we're seeing out there, is that the 5600 XT is now 11% faster than what AMD actually quoted at CES. This isn't the first time that AMD has changed something before a launch when it came to their GPUs. They did this with the 5700 and 5700 XT, dropping the price on those with when Nvidia announced their Super Series. So that's not necessarily something new, but the fact that they had so much left in the tank for the 5600 XT that they could increase its performance by that much is a little weird. That It's almost like they were anticipating Nvidia dropping the price. It's almost like AMD is playing chess while Nvidia is just playing Battleship. They're playing a completely separate game. Doesn't make no sense. What do you think about AMD upping the performance of the 5600 XT before it launches? I'm keen to hear what you think of that down below in the comments. 11% extra performance before it even comes out. 
Weird. What's also weird is that apparently Zen 3 is getting added to the Linux kernel. There's not more information than that. AMD has already confirmed that Zen 3 is coming this year. Lisa Su has reiterated in a different interview that Zen 3 is indeed on pace to come out. So the fact that it's getting added to Linux kernels isn't necessarily so strange, but it's happening. And what's also happening is that we're not only getting a new GPU from NVIDIA on the mobile side, but there's also leaked benchmarks in that of the Intel Core i9-10980HK. That's a lot of letters and numbers. I don't like it. This looks to be Intel's highest end chip that should go toe to toe with AMD's Ryzen 4000 mobile processors that just got announced at CES. It doesn't look like it's gonna hit five gigahertz according to this benchmark, only coming in at a maximum frequency of 4.98, which is just pathetic. How could you not hit five gigahertz Intel? Uh, but we'll see if they actually announce this, if the price makes any sense, because that seems to be where Intel is these days. They have the product, but is it actually worth it? Probably not, but they also have ray tracing and they've updated their Osprey ray tracing engine to 2.0, adding more features, which you can learn more about if you click the link in the video description. And while you're down there, you can click the link for the next article, which is about moon stuff. The moon, do you wanna be on the moon? Well, Lexus thinks you wanna be on the moon. And so they've come up with seven different designs of what they imagine moon vehicles will be like. So you can race around the moon on your speed bikes. Thank you, Lexus. This isn't the first time that they've brought like weird concept designs out. They were also the ones who did the hoverboard a little while back where it needed like dry ice on the ground to actually work. No, that wasn't them. Lexus was the one where they made an entire skate park that had the magnetic levitation on it so that they could actually use it. Lexus does weird things sometimes, friends, even though they're a car company. They're into moon vehicles. And they'll probably get there thanks to Elon Musk and SpaceX latest test, which was the abort mission test, which successfully allowed their mission to fail because the crew capsule could actually successfully detach from the rocket and make sure that it landed safely in the ocean. And that means that, at least according to Elon Musk, we should see the first crewed mission of SpaceX in sometime in the second quarter of this year. But did you wanna fly a Boeing 737 MAX? No, you didn't because they crash. And not only does it crash, but it turns out it might not even start up according to the latest bug that will not allow it to take off because the computer can't verify that it's ready for flight. This is gonna delay Boeing's need to get the 737 MAX approved by the FAA for flight. It's apparently gonna push them back. They were supposed to meet some key deadlines by the end of January. It doesn't look like that's gonna happen. So even less people in a 737 MAX moving forward. This just seems to be a garbage plane that nobody should be flying it, just scrap it. Just scrap the billions of dollars that you spent on this thing. Which is what Instagram's gonna have to do because they're gonna be removing the IGTV button from the Instagram app because they report that nobody uses it. Nobody clicks that button. Everybody wants the videos in their native scroll feed. Nobody's clicking on the dedicated IGTV button. This is a terrible implementation. Who want an IGTV? Nobody. Who actually uses it? Hardly anyone. Only people who are making tons of content anyways and they just port it over to IGTV. Nobody's making native content for you. And then there's a report that has come out about the American ISP Frontier Communications. It turns out that they are actually going to be filing for chapter 11 bankruptcy because they've been negotiating with creditors about their debt situation. Apparently they have $16.3 billion in long-term debt. 356 million of that comes due by March 15th and they can't necessarily pay it so they have to restructure structure and the chapter 11 bankruptcy will allow them to continue to provide their services while also trying to work out a payment plan with their creditors. But in case you're with Frontier Communications, maybe look into a different option. I don't know, but you might be like I am here in Gainesville where I don't really have many choices and I'm just kind of stuck with the one ISP that I can get in my area, which sucks. And in a completely unrelated next news segment, the OnePlus 8 has apparently been pictured, the OnePlus 8 Pro rather, with its 120 hertz display settings, showing that you can easily switch between the different refresh rates on the screen from 120 down to 90 down to 60 hertz, if you're so willing with battery life being affected. But the key thing here is that it doesn't look like you have to sacrifice resolution in order to get that 120 hertz, which is a key feature that is apparently going to be included on the upcoming Galaxy S20 Ultra from Samsung in order to get 120 hertz on their screen, you have to drop down to 1080p, but it does look like the OnePlus 8 Pro will allow you to get it while at 1440p, which seems to be better. I don't know, obviously this is just a leak and it could potentially not be the case, but OnePlus giving us that liquid display that looks so smooth. 
on a phone. Which is what I want in my PlayStation VR. I recently acquired one in order to play video games in bed while my wife can use the TV. That way we both can have our programs. I can play video games. She can watch whatever she's watching. It's great, except for the resolution on the PSVR is terrible to use for non-VR games. I hate it so much. I'm so waiting for a PSVR 2, which thankfully, according to VR Education Limited, they've reported that there should indeed be a refresh of the PSVR coming out when the PlayStation 5 launches later this year. I'm so excited. I'm going to buy it. I need the higher resolution. It also might potentially have wireless connectivity as well as gauge tracking for foveated rendering, which would be welcome improvements. But I just want a higher resolution screen so I'm not seeing pixels all the time. And then a lot of us want new games from Valve that end in the number three, but it turns out that they just hate it so much. And according to HTC, they said that the new Half-Life Alex plus Left 4 Dead 3 would get a lot of people into VR, to which Valve promptly said, what are you talking about? We have no plans for Left 4 Dead. We haven't worked on it for years. No, no, there is no Left 4 Dead 3. Liars, stop. That is a paraphrase of the situation. They didn't actually call anybody liars, but they said that they haven't been working on anything for Left 4 Dead for years. And that makes me sad. And so I'm gonna depressedly end this episode of Hot News. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to our new studio. We're gonna change it as we go along. I appreciate you guys. This is a new chapter for UFD Tech, moving into the US years. We have one of our people here. She's off in the corner. You don't have to come on camera, it's okay. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching, bye.